And hello, good people of the internet. This is Tommy Kelly here from adventuresmovie.com and 47s.com, and this is the Tommy Kelly podcast. So, continuing with our trend from last week, can it be a trend if it's only the second week? Continuing on from what we mentioned, I mentioned last week, in that I will do one card at the 47s every week rather than doing another full out 47s episode. This week, I am going to do and talk about the Explorer. And I recently did a video on YouTube uh, about the Explorer, so it's uh, kind of feels like I'm repeating myself in my head, but I'm obviously not because you haven't heard it yet because it hasn't been posted to YouTube yet. But one of the things that happened when I was in the middle of doing that YouTube video is that something clicked with me with the Explorer. So that was good. That I enjoyed that, and I will explain that to you in a minute. So the Explorer is about expansion, about widening your horizons, expanding out, breaking through boundaries, getting into new ground, doing new things, that sort of jazz. Now, it could be seen as quite similar to the adventure in, you know, the adventure is about, again, about expanding yourself, doing things. But the adventure is about doing that in a physical sense, in about getting out there, physically doing stuff, challenging yourself, you know, meeting people, sports, adventures, you know, new challenges, and all in a kind of a very physical, out there, out there sense. You know, the out there world, pushing your boundaries, your comfort zones in the out there, out there. The Explorer is more about the in here, in here, in that it is probably best described as the servant of self-help or personal development. It's about expanding your mind and becoming better or a more refined, not refined, more expansive version of yourself, pushing your limits to see what you can do. It's the good example is that if you are you know, someone who always wanted to paint, never did. The Explorer would suggest that you should do that to, you know, to get those things that are inside you to come out, those creative bits, those bits about yourself that need to be heard or seen or expressed. So the Explorer is expansion of your in, inner world of personal development, self-help. Now, the thing that clicked me when I was doing a video on YouTube was that the Explorer to a large extent, to a very large extent, and one of its elements would be the opposite card or the opposite servant to the devil. The devil is about restrictions of, of, you know, your personal limiting beliefs, the things that you tell yourself that stop you from doing things or to hold you back or that limit you in some way. But it's inside. It's, you know, you doing it to yourself, your head, your brain, your mind, all that. Whereas explore is the exact opposite. It's the expansion of your brain, your mind, your consciousness. So that was an interesting uh, click that came to me. Regarding Explorer, when I was talking about it, when I did a video, that video will be up soon enough. So depending on when you're listening to this, if you're listening to it in a year, then it's all in the past. If you're listening to this in semi real time, then the Explorer video will be up in the next couple of weeks, fortnight or so. OK, so on to the main part of the podcast. I was talking before in the very first episode um, about gazing into black mirrors or into mirrors in general or gazing at face gazing and you can see faces changing and stuff like that. And I mentioned the thing about Stuart Wilde. That when I went to see him in Glastonbury that I had an experience with that. And I said I would come back to talking about Stuart Wilde at some point. So I'm going to take this podcast and talk a bit about Stuart Wilde. Stuart Wilde is less known than he really should be. He was a huge sensation in the new age in the 80s and early 90s. He was this guy who was like, he would hang out with Wayne Dyer, Deepak Chopra, and all these, you know, really well-known, well-named guys. But if you ask people about him, now, very few people seem to know him anymore. And I think the reason is because he got kind of very weird towards the end. He got into UFOs and aliens and demons and um, the Matrix and he started predicting things. And he got kind of fairly close into David Icke kind of doom porn territory. So I think maybe that put people off. But he's definitely worth checking out. He wouldn't have called what he does magic in any way. But it's, you know, a horse by a different colour. Horse by a different name. What's that expression? It is, it it is like a lot of his stuff is. Now, he would still, in a sense, would be coming from an energetic model. But there's definitely a spirit model in there as well, too. In that a lot of his, he would, his main thing was he was meditating. And he got so good at meditating that he starts seeing the near-death tubes. And then what, what he was doing, how he was doing his meditation was by trance. He, was, he would listen to theta metronomes. And he um, eventually got his brain slowed down so much that he starts seeing these tubes. Then after a while, he was able to go up these tubes and get into the, the spiritual realms or, or the... What did he describe? As, you know, it's the other side or whatever it is, you know, where these near-death tubes lead to. 
And he says the, the, how, why it took him so long was that he was trying to push himself into the tubes and the secret turned out to be to pull the tubes towards you. I don't know. I personally have never seen a near that tube. So I have to take his word for it. And he would talk about the different worlds and the different things that were going on there and the time was different. And as his, his sort of ideas progressed, they got fairly complicated and mirror worlds and hell worlds. And in one of his books, one of his later books, there's a whole thing about demons can get into your body, up your rectum and stuff. And it just got a bit silly. It's like there's talk on the Internet. So take what you want from this. I do not know that he got heavily into drinking drugs and it kind of warped his his sense of himself a bit. There's other talk that he was cursed or that he was attacked and all that. All I can tell you is that when I met him, he was very drunk. So I first came across Stuart Wilde when I was probably 12, maybe and um, 13, something like that. And my aunt Aunt Patricia used to call every uh, every couple of months, or whatever, or maybe every year. She used to live in uh, London, and you know I was living in Ireland at home. With my parents obviously, so we seen her every now and again. It was like a big occasion because she was always really interesting, and always had you know, you know, it was like the person who was out there doing stuff in the world, and we were back home in the country. <laughs> we didn't live in the country though, but you know, like, and to come back with the stories of the new world kind of thing. In a sense, also I was quite young, so it felt like someone who lived in London was like this big exotic location that had, that was out there, you know, that was separate from where I lived in, you know, in the housing estate in Ireland. So she would talk about a lot of spiritual stuff and her ideas and all. She was big into theosophy and Alice Bailey type stuff. And later on, she bought me all the Alice Bailey books as a gift and I read most of them and we'll talk about Alice Bailey maybe some other time. But yeah, she also gave us these Stuart Wilde books. And the first book she gave us, look, but give us, I mean, she gave my parents to read and I read it too, was Miracles. And Miracles is pretty much the law of attraction, the secret, Abraham Hicks, that kind of thing. You know, shoot for the moon, make your list, ask the universe to deliver. Very, very short book, but 40, 50 pages. But that was the first time, obviously, I never heard of anything like this. And it kind of opened up the idea that, oh, well, hold on, there could be something different. You can have a different view, you know, the Catholic worldview that we'd been taught at school or we'd grown up with. So I enjoyed I, the miracles. I thought this, you know, this has kind of opened my mind a bit, opened the door here. You know, the possibilities of what might, you know, might be existing in the world and that sort of stuff. You know, and it was really, it was mind blowing in a sense. Like this is all new to me and it was so interesting. And I kept trying to keep the conversation on those topics anytime she would visit. And of course, like my parents would want to be talking about it all the time. And um, although they were interested, to, you know, they wanted to talk about other things. Like, you know, not just what this 13 year old guy wanted to talk to. But anyway. She obviously was sending books over, you know, through the post or whatever when she went home as well. And for some reason, I ended up looking in the tumble dryer of, in our house. And I have no idea why. There was some sort of reason or compulsion I had to go look in the tumble dryer. Why was I looking in the tumble dryer? I don't know. So this was probably a year later, two years later, or something like that. Maybe. I'm not sure. Months later. Could have been sometime. And I found two more Stuart Wilde books that she had sent over. Now, I don't know if my mum was trying to hide them. Or had just put them, I don't know. I said it to her and she goes, oh, I, I don't know. You know, she didn't seem too bothered by it anyway. And the two books anywhere were The Force and The Quickening. And The Force and The Quickening are great books. The Force talks about the four disciplines of the initiate. And Quickening is more how to do stuff. Like, you know, like there's a thing in it called Turbo Thought and how to put thoughts into other people's minds. And, uh, you know, Turbo Thought and there's this thing about getting people to turn around and look at you and getting people to trip over and these kind of cool little exercises. But also uh, kind of how to do magic and how to put visualizations and put it out in, in, into the world or whatever. He was big into this thing called the etheric which was kind of dissimilar to what is like, uh, I suppose, Vril or Prana or Life Energy or, or any of those things. But Etheric is mostly, I think, a, theosoph a theosophic, theosophistic word. It comes from Theosophy. And that there's like your aura around you, you have an etheric body and all that. So there's definitely an energetic model come from, which has stuck with me to a large extent because that's, you know, what I came across first. Then when I went later on the Reiki and stuff like that, it seemed quite, you know, similar in thing. But again, Stuart had his own kind of slant on all these things one of his other things his main things are that the way things are are the way things are and that life is the way it is and you know you shouldn't judge what other people's lives are or and in a sense leave them alone even if it seems to you that they need help 
Like he, his point was that if we're all, he, he was big into reincarnation and stuff, and he was like, "Who are you to say that someone starving in Africa that they, you know, their spiritual or their soul came here to learn that, and you trying to send over your, your, you know, to help them or do something like that is interfering to, in a large extent with their spiritual evolution." Now it's an extreme example or whatever, but it, applying it to your own life is like stop trying to in a sense judge other people's evolution like you don't know where it is and leave them to be and don't try to impose what you think the world should be like on other people so there's an element of that that i i understand and i get but there isn't an element of you know jesus christ you know help people sometimes i don't think that giving someone money or charity or helping someone out is infringing on their life plan from a spiritual point of view now, maybe it is, but who's to say that their spiritual life plan doesn't involve getting helped from someone too? So we don't know. So I'm not sure it went fully with that, but I do understand the point that he says that an awful lot of these things that we worry about or stress about or think that are our responsibility are things that we have absolutely no control over and just let them be. You know, don't think all the troubles of the world are your responsibility, that you need to fix them or that you are to blame in some way. Which, from coming from a kind of a Catholic point of view, it would fairly have been saying that all the troubles of the world are not even just humans, but yours in particular, like mine. Like, everything that's wrong is because of you. And, you know, if when you sin, like, there's this thing in, like, you were brought up in Ireland that your sins are somehow affecting the world and making the world worse for other people you were to blame. So, like, if it was kind of countering that, um, and while I probably wouldn't go as far as Stuart on some of these things, I do see the point of it in that you know, let people they are. Don't judge them for, you know, your perceived evolution of them or what you think they should be doing. But when you take examples to the extreme, like don't feed starving kids, it, it just it's I don't think it's helpful. But that was the example he gave that was so. And um, I had many conversations with my sister uh, over this who just didn't like that at all. So then a couple of years later, well, probably 10 years later, less than 10 years later. I was 22 or 23 and I still had been reading Stuart Wilde over the years on and off and got his tapes. He did all these kind of self-help tapes and subliminal tapes, subliminal tapes, even if I could pronounce it, where there'd be nice music and then underneath there'd be affirmations and stuff. So I listened to a lot of that. I listened to a lot of his lectures and stuff like that. So I was kind of well in on his whole ethos and I was a very kind of scamp warrior don't take things so seriously, you know, have, if there was great humor um, to his vision or, you know, to his his view on life. Big issue was uh, with him was people being serious, you know, having this serious, being serious about spirituality or being serious about life. You have to be serious about life or, you know, you have it's like you have to be worried about these things because that's what it is. You're not a good person unless you've been serious and you're worrying. And he just thought that all that was stupid. So I really enjoyed that. I, and I totally agree with that. Um, so anyway, I ended up in Glastonbury um, for the Goddess Festival one year, which is like uh, not Glastonbury Music Festival, the actual town of Glastonbury in England. The girl I was going out with at the time and her mother and her mother was like um, a druid kind of. Um, she had her own kind of uh, what's the word gang, Scooby gang. I don't know what a group, whatever group of uh, there is a word I'm not thinking of. Her own Scooby gang of druids, and she was like the priestess, or whatever. But anyway, we went over to the goddess house because she had friends over in Glastonbury, and it was obviously just, they were big into the goddess thing. So when I got there, Glastonbury is really cool, it's full of uh, bookshops and all you know, all new age shops and all that. And it was like this was great because you could get it was very hard to get any of those sort of books or anything in Ireland at the time. You kind of had to order them in. This was pre internet. And, you know, Ireland was, you know, it just didn't have the um, demand for a lot of the stuff. Like, so the, it, the, just the bookshops wouldn't have it. So, and anyway, when I first bookshop I went in and I seen he had a new book and the book was The Sixth Sense, which is a great book full of great uh, etheric exercises and all that. But then I seen that he was also going to be giving a lecture in the local town hall the next night. So I just happened to arrive in Glastonbury the day before he was given a lecture and I was going, oh, this is just, you know, this is meant to be, what a synchronicity, this is unbelievable, this is a sign, all those things. So I rushed straight down to the town hall place and says, I'll have tickets for Stuart Wilde tomorrow night. And I went, are you having a laugh? No chance. And I went, oh, this isn't a sign. <laughs> this is not a sync. And they said um, that if I wanted to, I could come the next night 
sit in the waiting room and if people didn't turn up, I'd be let in, but it was highly unlikely. And I go, okay, fair enough. I'll try that. So the next night I did arrive early and I was, went in and you kind of end up sitting in this, like a kitchen a- area. And I thought I'd be the only person waiting, but there was like five or six people already ahead of me and then five or six more people came in after me. And it was like... Uh, Everyone's been friendly and oh, hope we get in, all that kind of stuff. And then every now and again, someone would come in and go, Mary, blah, blah, blah. And then Mary would go, well, that's me. And escape out and be delighted that she wasn't with us undesirables anymore. So eventually, anyway, it was my turn next. And I was going, oh, this is it. It'll definitely happen. Here we are. And my name got called and I got in. And I was, yes, it is a sign. So there was like a warm up act. It was kind of like a gig where there was this woman and she was doing um, crystal bowl kind of meditation stuff, which was really, really nice. I hadn't come across that at this time. And we did some chanting, which was chanting the vowels from your name, which was really nice. I really enjoyed that, too. It was like very settling and the room was lovely and all that. And so we were all geared up, ready for Stuart to come on. I couldn't believe this. I was like, this is he was like my hero. My spiritual hero, you know, he's the guy who, in, in a sense, if you want to put it, he's like the, the guru, the, you know, this was like meeting Jesus Christ in, in a large sense. You know, if you're, if you're a Catholic, it's like meeting the Pope or something. I don't know. He was really someone who I really admired and, and you know, had grown up with and who I thought was cool. And he came out and he was drunk and he was belligerent and he wasn't making much, much sense and he was aggressive. I was like, oh, it's, this is not what I expected at all. Because he's, like I say, he's really funny in his books and his tapes and his lectures. And really you know, positive and uplifting. And he was quite angry and giving out. And there was one point where he was like pointing at people in the crowd and pointing at them going, you're an asshole. No, because he, he was like doing, reading their energy or whatever. You're an asshole. You're okay. You're an asshole. You're okay. And people could get really annoyed and walking out. And there was some guy with a pyramid on his head and he was taking piss out of him but he was also talking about he was talking about one of the legends of Camelot and stuff and all that uh, Parsifal and that kind of thing but I was still I still just got to see Stuart Wilde you know I'm happy in, in that and it was kind of a letdown but there was this moment and I, this is the moment I was talking about in the first podcast where time kind of it's hard to describe it's as if everything slowed down as if everything became hyper focused as if everything became different. And I was just looking at his face as if the whole room disappeared, I disappeared, everything, and I was just to see his face. And all these other faces just flashed on top of it, kind of not coloured, but grey, and just kind of like a morph flowing in front of it. It was, it was silence or whatever. And then it was only then, after, I don't know, a couple of, obviously, seconds or whatever, I noticed that he'd stopped talking too. And it was, there was you know, there was silence. And then he just went, ah, oh, moment of peace. And the things on his face stopped and it went back to normal. And he then he did this thing where he bashes his head off, uh, you know, the whiteboard and stuff like that. But he didn't realize that there was a wall behind it. So he bashed his head and then the whiteboard and all into the wall. And it was all a bit weird. So anyway, he ran over his time and people were getting quite focal at this time and kind of talking to him and giving out and stuff and there's, I'd say there was about maybe 50, 100 people in that room I, I can't remember, I'm, I'm useless at judging crowds anyway so it, it ended and people walked out and you know lots of faces of people not being happy and all that and I says I'm my chance my arm go up and see if I can meet him or whatever, I wanted to shake his hand like that's a thing, of something I have that um, just to say why shook his hand, I struck I struck, I, <laughs> I shook Stuart Wilde's hand and I thought that'd be cool and I'd be like I've met a lot of kind of famous people and one of the things I always try to shake the hand just because it feels like a real contact rather than you know I seen I seen him across a room or I spoke to him or something and so I went up and I was halfway there and loads of people had kind of gathered around him and I was kind of going oh maybe I won't bother maybe I'll just go and a voice from behind me go go on up come on go up go up and I'm just this random woman and I went right okay it's a sign. So I went up and it's like everyone's round this um, messiah figure. You know, so all the people who were annoyed and, and you know, angry had left. And then there was all these, you know, true believers flocking around him and lots of people talking to him. And at that point, he seemed quite frail and weak or something. But there was people trying to hand him letters. And he's going, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't read letters. I just don't take letters or whatever. Then there was a guy beside him who, who had been... Um, 
you know, just in the audience, whatever, and just turned around and goes, we're, we're all going to head back to the pub across the street. I went, grand. Okay, so I kind of pulled back from the, the crowd or whatever and then went, kind of waited until, you know, this, the, the entourage came out and then there Stuart being helped down the road. Well, it's like it's just literally down the street by this guy, you know, and he's like, he was like, he's if he was an old man, a kind of a cripple, but like it's full of energy 10 minutes ago, you know. So we go in and we're sitting in and I sit down in front, directly in front of Stuart Wilde. I'm obviously very nervous and very excited. And again, stress, this guy was like such huge. I had such huge amount of admiration and respect and, you know, hero worship to a large extent. Because I'm still quite young. I mean, I still do have for him too, but at the time it was whatever, 22, 23. So, you know, th- this this was, the you know, my hero to a large extent. Not to a large extent, th- th- he was. That's what, you know, that's who, that's the way it was. So I'm sitting there and really nervous, my heart's racing and all that. And he says, you need to fucking chill out, man. <laughs> so we got, he had like sort of women around him, like helpers or whatever. And he got one of them to sit beside me and do a kind of a healing thing and put her hand on my head to lower my energy and stuff. And she's doing that and it's kind of chilling me out. And then she whispers in my ear, stop being worried about that. Dying's the easy part. Living is the hard part. And I went, okay. Um... I thought I knew that, <laughs> but uh, just interested. It's just I don't know. Was that just a random thing to say to me, or did she pick up something? Who can tell? Who can tell? So he's trying to finish his story anyway of this Camelot story or whatever, and there's an old guy beside him <laughs> giving out to him, tell him just to get uh, you know, get on with your story, tell your story, and so much so that in the end he finishes the story. So we get thrown out of the pubs because pub is uh, in England are not like they are in Ireland, where as soon as it's close time, you have to get out. In Ireland, it just it's last orders, and then you can spend a, an hour or so casually finishing your drink before you're, uh, you know, nicely asked to leave. So we were all outside, and we're sitting around by the monument. And we kind of end up talking now for a few hours. There's about ten of us, maybe twelve of us, and he's going through everyone, and he's you know kind of reading them and telling them a lot about their lives, and you know, really proper, accurate, full on describing people and telling them. It's stuff about themselves like I've never seen anyone do that since or before and um, these guys then come over and they were kind of uh, being aggressive and stuff Did I think they knew who he was and he grabs one of them anyway and he's like kind of choking him out of <laughs> weird like and starts saying about some of the things he'd done in his life and like some horrible things and your man it's a big thing he was saying that you he gives out grey sperm like this negative sperm or I, I don't know if he actually physically meant that or if he meant it as you know you give out bad energy or was he actually definitely talking about you know this negative sperm not sure that was very un- unclear on that but your man was genuinely um spooked by the whole thing he didn't run off or didn't anything he was he was but he was freaked by this this thing or whatever um, and he was going through then other people and he was telling different things. He was speaking very low and kind of when people were saying what, he was saying, are you deaf? Are you deaf? I don't know what that was about. And um, he chain smoked all my cigarettes. I smoked at the time when he smoked most of mine, which was cool. Stuart Wilde smoked my, my cigarettes. I was happy enough. Um, and then he came to me and he, he asked me, was I Irish? And he was just looking at me and take this whatever way you want. Um, he said to me, you are a master and you will lead people. And this was really weird because he was after when he went around other people, he had all told bad stuff to them. Like, and what you, you spend too much time in your head. You're, you know, you don't listen to other people. You think you're better than you are. You know, like not some of it, some of it was really nasty. Like a, a not nasty, nasty is a bad word. It sounds like he was being rude. He wasn't rude. He's like, he's saying, you know, I have, he didn't say this, I can't remember, but like, you know, you're really lazy or, you know, you don't do things and you, you know, you, you play the victim, that all that kind of stuff. Or And he told the guy about abusive stuff that he had done to other people and your man, had, you know, said, yeah, I, I have. And that. Anyway, so when he came to me and it, then it was nice stuff and it was super positive stuff, I just thought it was very odd. And I was like, oh, what do I do with that? You know, he says, um, you will lead people, a lot, but you have to give out an awful lot more sperm. Now, you seem to be preoccupied a bit about sperm, whatever that is. So, and as I say, unless that was a reference to something else, or he was just saying you need to live a bit more, or you need to get, you know, a lot of sexual conquests out of your system, or any of those sort of things. Who knows? I certainly don't. All I take from it is that I met Stuart Wilde, and he thought I was cool. 
and that's good enough for me. I don't think I'm a master. <laughs> and I have had times when I have I have been the leader in situations and stuff. So, I mean, you, you can put it to that. But um, other than that, I, t- I, d- I don't take anything more from it. But just as it's an interesting and nice thing to have met met my hero, met the person who I thought was the coolest person in the world, met the person who spiritually made me want to be, you know, who, no, not necessarily want to be. I didn't want to be him because I don't want to be anyone. I want to be me. But, you know, he was the roadmap. He was the guide. He was the person, you know, to hear how to do it. And it made up for the fact that he wasn't God in the sense of that he was a human who smoked, who drank, who was obviously a bit of an arsehole as well when he was drinking, um, who, you know, he was human and he had done all these things. Even with all that, even with all the negative kind of thing, he was by far the most impressive energetically person I have ever come across ever like some people I've met been in the music uh, industry like you met, meet an awful lot of people who are admired and who are like you know like rock stars and stuff like that and definitely there's a presence or something when they walk into a room you can you know about it there's something to these people not all rock stars have it you know it, some definitely have the opposite kind of you know to have a, a kind of a negative thing but there's just some sort of presence and he had the most of it I've ever come across by far. And I'm glad I met him. He kind of, after that, he did his, started doing his website and he started it being very weird. To be, he was like selling water that had been specially spiritually prepared and he was doing all these predictions and he kind of went off, went off the track to a fair extent. And the positivity and the love and the humor and, you know, and he became serious. He became very serious in his writings, and uh, which is strange for a man who who spent so much time saying that an awful lot of the ills of the world is seriousness. So it came to the end of the night, and he wandered off for a piss around the corner or something, and he had been telling this whole story about a guy in a boat or something, and as soon as the guy in the boat turned around to have a piss into the water, the rest of the passengers jumped out. And it was only the, the next day that I realised that's what I had done. He went for piss and I, I says, this is my cue to leave. Because I was staying in the friend's house and I, it, it was like one o'clock or at this point, half one. And I didn't want to be coming back to their house super late and stuff like that and waking them up. So that was on my mind and stuff like that. And as far as I knew, he could have been there all night, you know, five or six in the morning. Turned out he only spent another 10, 15 minutes there anyway. He talks about this in, in um, the Journey Beyond Enlightenment CDs as well, which was nice. It doesn't mention my name or anything, but... <laughs> It's, that was interesting, too, that it that was significant enough night for him to um, mention it, too, in one of his teachings. So that's my interaction with Stuart Wilde. I really hope that you do check out his stuff, um, because I think there's in so much gold in it, like so much gold in it. Some of it's fairly dated and some of it's of its time. But he was the very first person who uh, I came across who explained why money and the system and governments and all that and explain in a very good way how that's all a, a, a scam and all all the things that we've become more aware of over the last couple of years. It's in a book called Whispering Winds of Change. And I think it's 1991 or 90, early 90s anyway. And it's predicts the crash that happened and all these things, you know, all that, that stuff. Now, I don't know if other people, I'm sure other people were talking about it then, but he was the first person I heard talking about it. So if you were going to check out Stuart Wilde, I would suggest here starting off with listening to him. And the thing to listen to him, I'm nearly sure it's on YouTube, is infinite self the 33 energies of man and it's an audiobook um i'm actually i th- i'm pretty sure it was an audio and then they transcribed it for the book because it's that's the way it kind of feels because it doesn't feel like he's reading it um when he's talking and it's nearly word for word for the book so whatever but check that out also read his books um if you're into chaos magic or in magic in general the quickening has some great ideas and some really good thoughts and good techniques the force is great for all the discipline stuff, like the, I say, the four disciplines of the initiates, like it's the mental, the emotional, the physical, the spiritual disciplines, all that really good stuff. He's other books, affirmations, um, really good. Um, let me see what else. Six Sense, really good as well. And then towards the end of the ones you can probably stay away from at the beginning is the Art of Redemption, God's Gladiators. And there's one other one, one of his later ones that's, yeah, I can't remember offhand. That's the way it is. But yeah, so check out his, check his talks. There's a lot of talks on uh, YouTube as well, but try and get his early stuff. There's a couple of ones. Oh, the, the Secret to Money is having some. It's a good one. 
Um, he has a talk lecture on that from the, the late 80s on video on YouTube. And stuff. So check out his early stuff and um, you'll, you know, get to see the real character. He's a real character and uh, fun and enjoyable. Don't take things seriously. But if you go into his later stuff as your first introduction, you'll it will put you off. Just simply will. Absolutely. 100% will. So um, this is probably running longer. It is running much longer than um, previous podcasts. So I'll wrap it up now. So here we go. Um, check out the blog, adventuresinwooboo.com. I actually have a post about Stuart Wilde on it that I will put in the show notes of this podcast. If you want to know more about the 40 Servants, then go to the40servants.com and all the details are there. The deck, the digital deck, the guidebooks and the card meanings and all that. The newsletter goes out on a Tuesday. You can sign up on the site. There's YouTube videos. There's a Facebook page. There is the Facebook group, all of those things. So check all that stuff out. And if you can like and share this podcast like it that's can you like it? you can on soundcloud you can heart it yes give an itunes rating all those things and i will see you next week have a wonderful wonderful week